What's going on guys? I want to talk to you today about something that I recently discovered in myself that I want to share with you about childhood trauma, not even just childhood trauma, just um, past trauma and behaviors in general that ended up fucking you over in your adult life. Because personally, I have had a number of fuck ups <laughs> just recently due to those behaviors that I only just figured out. And I'll tell you straight up, if you don't know that it's a problem, then you're not going to know that you need to fix it. And sometimes it takes making a mistake or two or three or seeing a pattern for you to realize, wait a minute, this keeps happening and I'm noticing it's a pattern. Where did this come from? Because sometimes it's not as simple as like, you know, oh, I had this mistake, I just gotta not do it. And cool, because if it's a pattern, it's gonna repeat. And if you're not aware of it, then it's gonna keep on happening. So let me share my experiences to give you a little bit of context into what I'm talking about. So, I <laughs> had to go back to the beginning. Um, so since I was a kid, I've mostly been a loner, introvert, haven't had a lot of friends, you know, stereotypical nerdy kid that stayed in his house, playing video games, didn't really interact much, wanted to have a lot of friends, but just simply didn't. And I just stayed in my house playing my Game Boy Advance P or DS all day and didn't really do much. But I started getting that feeling that I really, really, like seeing people having fun being with friends, I really, really wanted that, but I didn't know how to go about it. And thankfully it's not due to any parental trauma. I know that happens to some people, but my mom raised me the best she could. Of course she, my mom was an on-call nurse at the time, so she could only do so much for me, but what she did for me, for, do for me was you know, as much as she could, she did good. Um, but nobody can really teach you how to socialize and make friends. You kind of just have to like, you know, do that as a kid. And not all kids are equipped to do that right off the bat. Nobody really teaches you off hand to do that. Of course, sometimes you have people who like, go ahead and talk to him, son, make a friend. And you go like, hi, Andrew. And then he's like, ugh. <laughs> so for me as a kid, um, it was hard to make friends. I really wanted to join several friend groups and I just couldn't. Um, so for the longest time, I didn't have a lot of friends, maybe one or two every now and then. Um, but I would have like, I ended up growing a longing for wanting to belong to a friend group or something like that. And the rare occasion somebody did either call my name or want to hang out or meet me for anything, it would just fulfill me completely all of a sudden I'd be like oh, somebody needs you oh my god oh my god and, and and I would just get so hyper and it's, it was like a drug where that feeling came in and it's very fleeting because like once they didn't need me anymore like they'll call me like you know join their dodgeball team or something and once that game ends it's over and all of a sudden it's like I go through with jaws where it's like oh man that feeling of being needed or wanted I want that again I want it and <laughs> I would just want to chase that again and again and so, as a kid, it didn't happen a lot, but it started manifesting more when I started turning into a teenager and started acting out um, in kind of dangerous behaviors when I want somebody to pay attention to me or want me. It's to the point where I would like either ignore somebody heavily or pretend I was hurt and do dramatic shit to get noticed so somebody could like call my name and say they need me or want me or want to help me or something like that so I can have that have the fix of being wanted. <laughs> so of course you'd think that like I would grow out of that behavior and eventually start learning how to make friends and to an extent I did but it definitely took a while and unfortunately um that longing for being wanted and needed kind of overrode the feeling for just being, for having friends and just overall, just me, I wouldn't feel complete or whole in life, if that makes sense, unless like somebody wanted or needed me. And typically I would start getting jealous when people started going for things without me. So, um, that started manifesting really heavily um, when I started getting into my first relationships, which, so far, I've only had two, but my first relationship, um, having somebody who said they loved me and f I felt like they wanted and needed me, 
to the point where I would never stop talking. We would talk like every second of every day that we happened to be available outside of school and whatnot. And I would just constantly, I would devote my entire being to them. Like I would forget to like do important things like, like shower, eat or yeah, even play video games, which is like my, my addic addiction back then, aside from masturbation, is playing video games all the time. But I would just forget to do basic shit just to talk to her and be so addicted, because I was getting that fulfillment of being wanted and needed all the time that I never thought of like what I wanted and needed from, from myself or for myself. I never really, you know, really got into any hobbies or really, um, got into any interest. I did end up going to college for video game development, but I ended up doing that for that person I was talking to, to make money. I'm like, this makes good money. And if I make that money, I'd be able to make a family. Not because like I wanted to do it, because I ended up dropping out after the relationship ended. And once it ended, since I devoted so much of myself to it, um, I ended up just sinking and just falling down to a deep rabbit hole of depression. Because while I gave everything I had to that relationship, I didn't have anything left for me. No foundation for me. Nothing that I liked outside of the relationship. So once that ended, I kind of ended. And I almost ended myself. It took a few friends, thankfully, that reached out to help talk to me and keep me sane. But even then, after that, I still went back to that mentality of being want to try for one and need it again, trying to ride that feeling, I would do dramatic shit unintentionally, just subconsciously, just like go like, hey, I'm probably not going to wake up tomorrow. And then people would start calling like my job and stuff like that. And when I think back on it, I'm like, man, I really did act out because I really wanted that fulfillment of, you know, being wanted and needed or somebody wanting to pay attention to me. And um, after a while, I kind of started coming into my own when I started getting working into IT and um, started doing things for myself and it kind of started healing a bit. It was going great until my next relationship, which for the most part in the beginning went quite well until I started falling into that habit again, that pattern of, hey, now I'm feeling wanted and needed by this person. Let me give 110% of me to the relationship now. And this over like, you know, first month fine, then over time I just started like going like all of me to the relationship. And I had to look for myself. So once that ended, and of course there's other aspects of it was, was damn. <laughs> but once that ended, it became so hard to move on due to the fact that that person made me feel so wanted and needed and I kept on trying to hold on to that feeling with that person that I just couldn't move on. So once everything just kind of fell apart, I ended up just making dumbass choices because I wanted to get that feeling that itch of being wanted and needed again. Um, that's my personal experience with it. And until that relationship, I did not know that was an issue until I looked back at myself. I'm like, this happened before. Why the fuck is this the thing? And then I realized that since I was a kid, I've always had this issue of just feeling like if other people don't want to need me, I just feel lonely and useless. And then I realized to myself, I'm like, but I'm not lonely and useless. I work a good ass job where I can pay for a luxury apartment and have money to do things I've always wanted to do in life for myself. There's things that I do like, but it was so overwhelmed by that feeling of wanting to be one that needed that I didn't know it was an issue until now. Like I really had to dig deep and look back and go like, oh, I've had this issue since I was a kid and I need to reflect on it. And thankfully reflecting on it and talking to people about it and just overall writing down what I realized helped me finally understand a big problem that I had in my life and thankfully it's allowed me to start my healing journey to be able to get over that mindset and be able to start focusing on myself and getting myself right so that way even if I find a partner or not I'll be able to do better and if it the relationship ends then I won't be so stuck so I'll have something to go back to 
well, of course I always have me, but I'll be able to focus on me more and not do everything for relationship. It's not bad to give yourself a little bit of part of yourself to relationship because that's important. But at the same time, if you don't have anything going for you, then what's the point? You can't take care of somebody. You can't take care of yourself. And this is it's just it's not just about relationship. It's about finding those patterns that you realize that you are running into and you don't know why. So you have to take a step back, maybe many steps back, going back to when you were either a kid, a teenager or 22, 23, wherever you start feeling like you say, hey, I started doing this action when I was this age and it kind of carried over to now. It's kind of a pattern. And once you start recognizing and taking accountability for it and realizing that, hey, now I know this is a problem. Now I can work to fix it. And there are multiple ways to fix it. You can talk to a therapist, talk to your friends, talk to your family, start journaling. There is a copious amount of options that I'm not going to list every single one. I just know the first step to solving it is recognizing that it's a problem. Recognize that you have a problem and you know you need to take a step back. Because once you find out where the source is, that's when you can start addressing it. And I highly, highly advise if you're noticing patterns in your life that keep on repeating, that's keeping you down, that's a detriment to your life, whether it's causing you to hold on to something that's already gone or is causing you to make you not want to do things in your life that you always want to do, like it's holding you back in life from pursuing things that will make your life better or help you learn a skill, then by all means, take a step back and look at the bigger picture of your life from when you're a kid to now. Think about all those experiences, good or bad, that may have contributed to your current behavior or those patterns that you're seeing. Because trust me, if I can start realizing that and getting better, I feel like you can too. And I definitely hope this video has helped you out. I think it's gone on long enough. I know I've gone into a lot about my backstory and past. And it may or may not have made sense, but to me it makes sense. And hopefully at least you're aware that taking a step back and looking back at yourself when you're noticing patterns is a good first step in finding out what the issue is. But that's it for me. My name is Trent from No Nut Clarity. I hope this helped you out. And I hope you have a good day, night, evening, whatever. And peace.